with humble prostrations and reverence i am blessed to welcome shrimat swami suvirananand ji maharaj general secretary ramakrishna mat and mission belur mat to deliver the benedictory address welcome swami ji om namaste yatirajayo विवेकानंद सूरये सच्ची सुख स्वरूपाय स्वामीने तापहारिने मिस्टर बीजन ऑनरेबल चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ द स्टेट ऑफ केरला हु इज द चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ टुडेज प्रोग्राम स्वामी भुवनात्मानंद अध्यक्ष अब रामकृष्ण मठ कोची श्री मधु नायर चेयरमैन एंड मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ कोचिंग शिपयार्ड लिमिटेड ब्रदर मॉन्स एंड ब्रह्मचारीज रिस्पेक्टेड डिग्नेटरीज गेस्ट एंड एडमायर ऑफ स्वामी विवेकानंद ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ रामकृष्ण मठ एंड रामकृष्ण मिशन I extend a cordial welcome to Mr. Bijan, who has spared his precious time to join us today in this virtual program to pay tribute to the Prophet of Universal Religion, Swami Vivekananda. 11th September is observed as the Universal Brotherhood Day around the globe each year. to commemorate the historic speech delivered by swami vivekananda in the world's parliament of religions at chicago on this day in 1893 swami vivekananda's address at the inaugural session of the parliament delivered on the afternoon of september 11 was of 3 minutes duration only yet it made a tremendous impact Unlike other delegates, Swami Ji spoke not from a prepared paper, but spontaneously, as the spirit moved him. Basically, however, these were not words merely; these were, in truth, the outpourings of the inspired soul of a prophet, a prophet of human emancipation, eternal truths uttered by a tongue of flame. his deep musical voice rang out to the message i quote we believe not only in universal toleration but we accept all religions as true and quote the mortal words of lord krishna in the gita quoted by him became vibrant with the wonderful sense of universalism quote and quote who so ever comes to me through what so ever form i reach him all men are struggling through paths which in the end lead to me swami vivekananda's message at the parliament of religions was historic and epoch making since it pointed to the evolution of a new world based on universal brotherhood amity peace and cooperation for the progress of the humanity as a whole underlying the chicago lectures of swami vivekananda there was thus the vision of a new world order based on equality and freedom and justice for mankind as a whole thus was laid the foundation of a new universal religion court and court broad as the heaven above and embracing the best in all religions harriet munro an eminent poet and a journalist who regarded herself as greatly privileged to attend the parliament wrote in her biography i quote it seemed a great moment in history prophetic of the promised new era of tolerance and peace and court Sister Gargi, a Western admirer of Swamiji, wrote in her book, 
new discoveries. I quote again, Swamiji gave coherence and unity to the bewildering number of sects and beliefs that through untold ages have gathered and flowered under the name of Hinduism. He revealed the lofty philosophy and aspiration, the great religious goal and drive, the central beliefs common to each widely divergent sect. He made it all not only clear, but supremely inspiring, a living religion springing eternally from the very soul of humanity itself." Unquote. He spoke not as arguing from a tradition or from a book, but as from the experience and the certitude of his own. Some of the core ideas presented by Swamiji Maharaj in his Chicago addresses are as follows. Number one, religion doesn't consist in struggles and attempts to believe a certain doctrine or dogma, but in realizing, not in believing, but in being and becoming. Two, the whole objective is to become perfect by constant practice, to become divine, to reach God and see God. This reaching God, seeing God, Man is to become divine by realizing the divine. Idols or temples or churches or books are only the supports of his spiritual journey. On and on and there he must make progress. Three. To people whose minds were conditioned by negative ideas about themselves, Swamiji said, quoted, We are children of God, the sharers of immortal bliss, holy and perfect beings, ye divinities on earth, sinners. It is a sin to call a man so. It's a standing label on human nature. Though he spoke on the fundamental principles of religion based on Hinduism, his addresses focused on a clarion call for universality. He said, again I quote, If there is ever to be a universal religion, it must be one which will have no location in place or time. Which will be infinite like the God it will preach, and whose sun will shine upon the followers of Krishna and of Christ, on saints and sinners alike, which will not be Brahminic or Buddhistic or Christian or Mohammedan, but the sum total of all these, and still have infinite space for development, which in its Catholicity will embrace in its infinite homes and find a place for every human being. It will be a religion which will have no place for persecution or intolerance in its quality, which will recognize the divinity in every man and woman, and whose whole scope, whose whole force will be created in aiding humanity to realize its own true divine nature. Unquote. The keynote of his message was harmony, harmony of religions, harmony of the East and the West, harmony of religion and science. We all know how important religious harmony is in the modern world. Globalization of economy, advancements in science and technology and other factors are now bringing people all over the world closer than ever before. But unfortunately, conflicts among religions constitute a major obstacle to the establishment of harmony and peaceful coexistence among communities and social groups. Swami Vivekananda spoke strongly against religious fanaticism and bigotry. He said, again I quote, sectarianism, bigotry, and its horrible descendant, fanaticism, 
have long possessed this beautiful art. They have filled the earth with violence, drenched it often and often with human blood, destroyed civilizations, and sent whole nations into despair. Had it not been for these horrible demands, human society would be far more advanced than it is now." Unquote. Even after more than a hundred years, these words of Swami Vivekananda ring true in today's world. At the Parliament of Religions, the string that connected all his thoughts is the need for harmony and peace between men, wending their ways towards the same goal. There were many who failed that religions of the world are obstacles towards the realization of the spirit of universal brotherhood. It should be banished from society and confined to the private chambers of one's own home. They opined. Swami Vivekananda boldly countered this view, saying, quoted, for all the devilry that religion is blamed with, religion is not at all in fault. No religion ever persecuted man, no religion ever burned witches, no religion ever did any of these things. What then incited people to do these things? Politics, but never religion. And if such politics takes the name of religion, whose fault is that?" Unquote. Now it's an undeniable fact of history that whenever religion became the political denominator, it began to breed narrowness and fanaticism, leading to hatred, fear, and violence. In the heart of Swami Vivekananda, there was no sense of separate. He recognized the great truths of all religions. In a lecture before the Ethical Society of Brooklyn, he said, Again I quote, We Hindus not only tolerate, but we accept every religion. Praying in the mosque of the Muslims, worshipping before the fire of the Zoroastrians, and kneeling before the cross of the Christians, knowing that, so many religions are but so many attempts of the human soul to grasp and realize the infinite." Unquote. On 5th October 1893, Free Press in the USA reported on Vivekananda in the Chicago Parliament of Religion. Again I quote, Vivekananda is not a Brahmin, is not a Buddhist is not a Parsi, is not a Mohammedan. He may be said to represent the best in all of this. He speaks for universal truth or the unification of all truth." Unquote. Even during the days of all-out missionary antagonism against him in the West, Vivekananda wrote to each study, quoted, Doubtless I do love India, but every day my sight grows clear what is India or England or America to us? We are the servants of that God who by the ignorant is called man. He who pours water at the root, doesn't he not water the whole tree? There is but one basis of well-being, social, political or spiritual to know that I and my brother are one." Unquote. When we speak of spirituality and humanity, we must remember that we want a religion, a holistic religion, which leads us to the cherished millennium which we call spirituality. We feel that I am that supreme being, that supreme being is inside me, which is why Swamiji says, God resides in man. So to serve God, Worship God in and through man is the highest form of worship. Swami Vivekananda was not only a saint of the highest order, an orator of divine right, 
a paragon of patriots and a brilliant organizer, but also a sensitive soul who felt deeply for the oppressed masses of our country. His soul was aglow with the love of his countrymen and women. He famously declared, quote, I do not care for God who can't wipe the widow's tears and provide food to the hungry orphans." Unquote. According to him, the best way of putting spirituality into practice is through unselfish service. Seva Yoga. Before his departure to the West, Swamiji wrote to the Raja of Mysore thus, quote unquote, they alone live who live for others the raised are more dead than alive. Vivekananda went to a Babaji at Gajipur. His name was Pohari Baba. Pohari means Baba Nahari, one who eats air and lives on air. Vivekananda went there and after meeting Pohari Baba, when he travelled across India, he saw lakhs and lakhs of Pohari Babas Standing on both the sides of the road, Gajipur's Pohari Baba became Pohari Baba, became Pabanahari, out of a spiritual large, whereas these lakhs and lakhs of Pohari Babas that Vivekananda saw standing on both the sides of the road didn't become Pabanahari out of spiritual aspiration, but they became Pohari Babas because they had nothing to eat. They were Pohari Babas under compulsion in contrast with Gajipur's Babaji who became Pohari Baba under option. Swamiji says again, enough is enough. Your religion has entered into the cooking pot in the kitchen, throw the bells into the Ganges and so on. And Swamiji says again, we must be born in the church, but it is very bad to die there. We must transcend it. Vivekananda says, we must reach a stage where there is no Koran, where there is no Bible, where there is no Three Pitago, and where there is no Gita. When we reach that stage, that is spirituality, where we say, I am that, I am the Supreme Soul. Vivekananda says, had I been a householder and had I had a child, immediately after his birth I would have put him on the cradle and said, Tamaushi Niranjana, you are the great Supreme Being. God resides in every human being, which is why Swamiji again says, I give you a new religion, I give you a new Vedas, I give you a new man. And what's the religion he spoke of? The religion which cannot give a piece of bread to the hungry man, a religion which cannot give medicine to a patient, a religion which cannot give right of education to the ignorant, a religion which cannot wipe out the widow's tears, a religion which cannot stop the wills of the orphans is no religion. This is what Vivekananda suggested for the modern age. In California, Vivekananda claimed Vedanta as the future universal religion of mankind. While Christianity is based on the life and teachings of Jesus, and Buddhism on those of Buddha or Mohammedanism on those of Muhammad, the Vedic religion of Hindus is based on the eternal principles discovered by the countless spiritual seekers, saints, prophets, and sons of God. Vivekananda said, I quote, the Hindu can worship any sage and any saint from any country whatsoever. Why not? Ours, as I have said, is the universal religion. Long before the League of Nations or the United Nations was conceived by humanity, Vivekananda first gave to the Indians in 1897 his futuristic vision of the emerging international culture based on harmony of nations 
harmony of religions. I again quote, even in politics and sociology, problems that were only national 20 years ago can no more be solved on national grounds only. They are assuming huge proportions, gigantic shapes. They can only be solved when looked at in the broader light of international grounds, international organizations, international combinations, international laws are the cry of the day that shows the solidarity." Unquote. Vivekananda prophesied this in 1897. Today, after the two devastating world wars, we see the onset of globalization. When all nations are forced to work in international atmosphere, we WTO, WHO, UNESCO, and UN influencing every sector of the lives of various nations. Roma Rola wrote in his biography of Swami Vivekananda, quote, love, peace, brotherhood, etc. have become to us mere words. Each one cries, universal brotherhood. We are all equal. And then immediately afterwards, let us form a sect. The need for exclusivism reappears at a gallop with a badly concealed fanatical passion, which makes secret appeal to all the wickedness in men. It is a disease. Why these fightings? Because of extreme religious intolerance, mutual distrust, and destructive fanaticism. Behind fanaticism, the primary motive is selfishness rather than devotion to God. Vivekananda explains again, quote unquote, fanaticism only makes hatred. A fanatic is a fanatic simply because he expects to get something for himself in return. As soon as the battle is over, he goes for this point. When you come out of the company of fanatics, you may learn how really to love and sympathize." Unquote. The ideal of harmony of religions forms the real basis for what is nowadays known as the religious pluralism. The religions of the world are different paths to the ultimate goal. These paths are not mutually contradictory but complementary. What is now needed is an attitude of acceptance towards world religions. Quote unquote, the right way of thinking, says Vivekananda, is to know and realize that all religions are different forces in the economy of God working for the good of mankind. What is necessary, according to Vivekananda, is that while each preserves his own individuality, he shall at the same time assimilate the spirit of ours. Swamiji Maharaj says, quote, I shall go to the mosque of the Mahamadan. I shall enter the Christian's church and kneel before his crucifix. I shall enter the Buddhist temple where I shall take refuge in Buddha and in his law. I shall go into the forest and sit down in meditation with the Hindu who is trying to see the light which enlightens the heart of everyone." Unquote. We read in the Bible according to St. John, in the beginning there was the Word and the Word was with God and the word was God. Quote it. Vivekananda's words are full of the fire of divinity. You have heard Vivekananda said to Californians that Christ said, My words are spirit and they are life. So are my words spirit and life. They will burn their way into your brain and you will never get away from them. 
his master felt in this disciple song fire of divinity his words as romarola said are great music phrases in the style of beethoven stirring rhythms like the march of handel choruses and i can't touch the sayings of his scattered through the air at a distance of 30 years without receiving a thrill through my body like an electric shock what the world needs today is a new genre of leaders who have got the universal outlook and broadness of a rational advaitist directed to the creation of a harmony of religions such a harbinger of new genre of humanity vivekananda found in his master sri ramakrishna Vivekananda's words spoken in the world's parliament of religions carried conviction because he had seen the inspiring life of his master with his own eyes. A man whose whole life was a parliament of religions. His realization of the essential truth of all religions had given Sri Ramakrishna a deep sense of identification with all religious groups. He could embrace Muslims, shake hands with Christians, sing with the Shaktas, dance with the Vaishnavas, and worship with Brahmas. American author Claude Allen Sturck, in his book on Sri Ramakrishna entitled God of All, wrote, I quote, Ramakrishna's approach to the religious pluralism of mankind may play an important part in bringing about peace in the world and cooperation among religions." Unquote. Swami Vivekananda prophesied, again I quote, the idea of harmony of religions, the idea of universal acceptance and universal tolerance will be a great acquisition to civilization. Nay, no civilization can exist unless this idea enters into it. No civilization can grow unless fanaticism, bloodshed and brutality stop." Unquote. A hundred years passed since the spirit of universalism and internationalism, so much needed today, was the first given to the world in bold words by Swami Vivekananda. Today, the world has started realizing the historic importance of this message. In the centenary celebration of Vivekananda's participation in Chicago Parliament of 1893, held at UNESCO in Paris, the Director General of UNESCO, Dr. Frederico Mayo, who drew inspiration from Vivekananda's universalism and concern for humanity, what are the words which Vivekananda has said from the tribune of Parliament? Quote, I fervently hope that the bell that tolled this morning in honor of this convention may be the death knell of all fanaticism, of all persecution with the sword or with the pen. Unquote. Toynbee gave the prophetic warning in 1969, and the world cared little to accept Sri Ramakrishna or his message to her. Then came the turning point in history. On 11 September 2001, the sky-touching flames burning in the debris of the World Trade Center at New York slaughtered successfully in scorching fire more than 5,000 lives. The historic human destruction revealed the face of terror behind long-cherished fundamentalist dreams. Vengeance of history quickly followed, slaughtering the same fundamentalist in Afghanistan and Iraq. Cities after cities in the Middle East, Indonesia and India began to burn on the fire of hatred, born of fundamentalism, where the cry is, my God is the only God and my prophet is the only prophet. At the same time, a new civilization dawned. The Ramakrishna temples in Belur Mott, in other places of India or in San Francisco, stands out imperiously with the spires, filigree, pillars, halls, facade, 
of Islam, Buddhism and Christianity. In this Ramakrishna temples, all over the globe, the followers of Sri Ramakrishna observe Christmas and celebrate Mahavira, Buddha and Guru Nanak's birthday. Human civilization, frightened of an imminent global disaster, backed by fundamentalist hatred, waits with a baited breath for the blessed hour of universal brotherhood, which Ramakrishna Vivekananda assured more than a hundred years ago. In conclusion, I would like to point out that Swami Vivekananda is not a figure of the past, but a living power in the lives of billions of people. Swamiji's message of universal brotherhood has immense relevance and importance in the present day world and for many centuries to come. If our nation moves along the lines indicated by Swami Vivekananda, such as the harmony of religion, universal acceptance and universal tolerance, universal brotherhood in the coming decades, it can become not only an economic superpower, but also a cultural dynamo leading the other nations of the world. The real significance of Swamiji's life and message lies in giving us this glorious vision and in showing us the way to attaining it in this 21st century. Let us pray to Swami Vivekananda, our leader, in the following words. Sarve Sukhina Bhavantu, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makaschit Dukhama Aptuma. Let all be happy, let all be free from ailments, let all be blessed with the vision of truth, beauty and goodness. Let misery touch none. Before I wrap up, I once again express my thankfulness and gratitude to Sri P. B. Jayanji, Honorable and beloved Chief Minister of the State of Kerala for being with us today in this program and making it a memorable one for all of us. Thank you all so very much.